everybody, this is Michael. Welcome back to episode 12 of Let's Make Maps, where we are making a fake Star Trek deck plan based on uh, this guy here, which is the bridge level of an Intrepid class starship. Here's the example we've been kind of working from. This is one that I made for a home RPG. And um, last episode, I sort of showed how to go about making some of the details. I'm not all that happy with the uh, the way this turned out, the colors and all, but it's going to work for what we're doing. The techniques are right. Uh, would probably be just a matter of maybe playing with the colors. You can see in this one, I went with very representational uh, colors, uh, just using colors from the Elkar's interface here to kind of create the machines and the outlines and all of that. And I think that the colors I chose over here uh, tie it together nicely. I kind of started going grays on the machines over here, and I'm just not sure how that works, especially with the pink outline. But in any case, um, it's done, and we're going to roll with it. Also, I, again, do wish I had made the interface a little bit bigger. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, the resolution of this map a little bit bigger. But uh, but we're all done. I did the uh, consoles and I made a little overlays here just to just kind of following what was in the original deck plan. Uh, they did have some black on here, which I didn't do, thinking that would look a bit harsh. I did go back and change this to kind of a green color and made the couch in Janeway's office match that. So we're going to call this done for now. And uh, the next thing that I'd like to do is to frame it because it just it doesn't look like much of anything right here. So what I'd like to do is something like I did here, which was a super basic uh, Elkar's interface, totally made up. Um, I made these shapes custom using um, using combined uh, Photoshop shapes, and I just picked colors. I pr think probably from an image that I found on the. Um, on the web uh, of a like a real screen from Star Trek and I threw in some details like I noticed that occasionally a button will be red or something like that. Also, um, typically, uh, although they'll use English for you know headers and stuff and, and items in the diagram, a lot of times like the, the numbers on the Elkar's, or I'm sorry, the, the text on the Elkar's buttons will be just a numerical string. Now I don't know what this is my uh, my own internal story for it is, is that these are uh, these are localization strings. Uh, so if your uh, if your implanted universal translator is working, you'll actually see the text in whatever language it is that you read displayed here. But since we don't have that, all we see are these inscrutable numbers. We don't know what this all is. That's my internal story, and I'm sticking with it. So we want to make this, and uh, we could do it from scratch. And you know what? Screw that. Um, because other people have done the work for us here. Uh, over on DeviantArt, I found a uh, fellow who has made a uh, an Elkar's uh, vector shapes that we can just sort of bring in and uh, and select and use. Now he's actually got these are custom Photoshop shapes. I didn't actually see the link for it. Doesn't matter. We can just take this image here and use that. He's also got a link to color swatches, which he got from elcarscom.net, uh, which has all the colors and their web safe codes over here. Also, they have a download for a font, uh, which is useful, Swiss 911 Ultra Compressed BT. I've downloaded that and installed it. Now, I'm not entirely sure what font I used originally. I think it was some Star Trek specific font that I found and used. I don't believe I used the Swiss font, but there's no way to tell at this moment because I don't have the original file handy. So, um, well, how are we going to do this? Well, one thing we probably want to do is go ahead and get rid of all of the layer details here. Actually, we can just do a copy merged. So I'm just going to grab that and edit uh, copy merged. Control Shift C if you want to do it that way create a new file and we're going to drop that in there and then what we'll do is we'll add canvas to um, you know I don't know how much canvas but we'll add a bunch of canvas around so that we can uh, so that we can have some room to work with and then we can trim it back down when we get the layout that we want so why don't we try maybe making that 4000 and um, Let's make it a little more vertical too, so we'll go 4,000 that way as well. So we'll have a big square, 
and we zoom out can we even see it not really okay and our background is a little funky that's weird it created all the background with black but it has this going on I'm gonna select all and just clear it to black so now we have okay yeah I know I've got the wrong layer selected so now we've got our deck plan over here and we can it's very hard for me not to type desk plan for some reason so I'm gonna close this one I'll save it because I'm not sure what changes it thinks were made to it and uh, and now we've got this so with this guy let's drag in our Elkar's vector shapes and let's drag in the Elkar's color swatches why do we have um, guides yeah, I don't know, but we can uh, we can turn off the view there, so we don't have to look at them. View guides. I don't know why I'm doing this. It probably doesn't matter. Right, um, and you know what? I'm just going to copy these over to here and pop them down on our original. Here we go, and I can just close these. So, like I said, didn't need to turn off the guides really, but I did anyway. All right, so let's take a look here. We've got our color swatches and our vector shapes. And I'm just gonna go ahead and and nope. Can't tell you getting the rhythm down to uh, no. I just want to change the name, not open the thing. is uh, is a fun one here. There we go. And I'll throw those into a uh, just a little layer to group them together so I can close them up if I don't want to see them. And, um, and now we need to figure out what's going to happen with this thing. So let's make a background. Um, learn to type. Make a background layer and I'm going to move these guys in there. Or am I? You can't do that because you're locked. Is that the problem? Um, yeah, okay. I don't know what's going on. Sometimes, like, stuff don't want to come unlocked. Why, why, doesn't, why doesn't this want to come unlocked? I don't know why it doesn't want to come unlocked, but it doesn't matter, I guess. We'll just ignore it for now. All right, so let's think about what we want to do with the, uh, with the overall shape of, the, uh, of this thing. So if we throw another layer in and hide that, maybe and think about what our composition looks like over here and I, and I don't know so we're just gonna play to make it a color that we can see of course I can't see the bloody cursor because it's black can I turn turn that off and maybe we can see a little better yeah alright You guys might be able to see it, but I can't. Right, so we have like a frame that way and a frame this way. That seems to be a common Star Trek-y type of thing where we have a, a like a header frame and then like a content frame, kind of like a web page almost. We could put a frame on the bottom, but we don't necessarily need one. Uh, what we could do, though, is what about some sort of like little supplementary insert over here? So something like that could work. Maybe this is thin. My freehand drawing is horrible. Sorry, but we're not gonna. I'm not gonna be using the tablet much for this. So I'm just sort of. Uh, I'm okay with just kind of doing this by hand. Scribble, scribble. <laughs> How people draw with a mouse. Uh, it, I'll, it'll never cease to amaze me. A friend of mine, uh, who does gaming with me does a lot of uh, like map making on she'll just go get a random photo off the internet of like a hull shape or something and uh, just start doing a map in MS MS paint with a mouse and I just it, it, it astounds me and if you guys go to cartographers guild you'll there's a couple people over there that make just these sort of excellent maps with uh, with a mouse and something like MS paint but even if it's not MS Paint, even if it's Photoshop, I'm totally amazed. So something like this, I think, is probably good. Can we just maybe move this, like here? 
I feel like this whole thing could be just a little bit smaller. Like maybe that. And get that sort of positioned in there nicely. We probably want to do a couple leader lines off of here too, just so we can point out a couple features, even if it's not, you know, we're not going to go through and make this into an engineering diagram. But it could be kind of cool uh, to have a little bit going on. All right, I think that's good. And so let's just call this, we're going to call this our working area. I'm going to take these guys and um, move them just a little bit. Maybe pop it down here so I can get access to it. And swatches can live down here. That's fine. And then we could cut this off, but let's wait until we see for sure what we want to do. All right, uh, so here are our shapes that we can work with. Um, we can choose whatever thickness we want. I'm thinking, you know, something along these lines is probably pretty good. So why don't we maybe throw on some guides? Here, here goes me turning on guides again. Let's turn on rulers. Although I don't know why. I guess because it's easy to drag guides from. I always turn on rulers. So what if we did something about like that? And um, I'm going to grab one of these bottom pieces here. Actually, that one's rather perfect. Uh, let's. I'm just going to use the wand tool. Click on the vectors layer, and I'm going to select that. And then up here, I'm going to create a new group, and let's call this the interface. And we'll just start drawing into here. This is going to be our sketch layer. You don't have to label every layer, but when you think there might be confusion, like you look over here and there's layer 1 to 1,000, if you think you're going to have an issue with uh, figuring out what layer is going to be what, then go ahead and name it. Makes it easier. Might as well. Now let's make this a color we can see, but different than red. And I'm just going to fill that in. So now we've got like a little bit here, and we can see, well, is that big enough? Well, probably not. Probably not. Um, here's where having the fellow's actual vector shapes would come in handy. Do I revise my plan? And maybe we draw them by hand. Let's think about that, because we can't resize this without, without losing a lot of fidelity, so we probably don't want to do that. Let's throw on some more guides. There. Maybe we'll shrink this down a little bit. It doesn't really need to be giant like that. Slide this out to here. Uh, in our sketch, I noticed that this is now extending beyond what I would consider to be the edge of the screen with my new, uh, my new edge over there. So maybe let's pull that back a little bit, back to here. We can move the uh, deselect, move the background up just a little bit, just so we're not conflicting with that there. And let's go back, throw on a few more of these grid lines. So there, and then I kind of like the, I kind of like these two to be the same. How we make that happen, I'm not quite sure. What I could do is just pull this back to maybe that line there. I'm looking on the edge of the ruler over here, just trying to get them right, roughly the right size. There we go. I think that's pretty good. I'm just going to delete that so I don't, or don't believe it's inside. Delete back to there. So if we consider two swoops whatever these are called, uh, like this, I think we're in pretty good shape over here. So, yeah, let's do this with, um, let's do this with, with Photoshop shapes. I know, it's a bit of a reversal. Um, you could certainly do this. It would be much better to get non-rasterized shapes, though, if you're going to. All right, so let's take the rectangle tool. Let's make sure we're not going to draw any rounded, roundedness. We're not. Okay, cool. Now, um, I think we're just going to start plopping them down. Oh, my 
Goodness, maybe that's a bit too close. Let's zoom out a little bit. All right. And you know, 75%? 50? Yeah, I guess 50. I just want to get an idea. I just want to get a look over here at some of these things. Let's not make too many of these because I don't want to add like a million. Um, I don't want to add like a million little uh, little buttons here and have to label them all and stuff. So there you go. There's a shape, and uh, we can make another shape. I mean, this ain't rocket surgery. So let's see if that's acting awful funny. But let's see if we can kind of get the spacing right. And what I'll do is I'll make like maybe three, four of these and we'll space them out. Um, we'll just make three, four of the same size. And then we can use some Photoshop magic to make sure that they're all spaced properly. So if we grab these four and go up to here, we can uh, arrange them. Oops, I just did a line. Didn't mean to do that. Oh no, I did distribute. I, I did it. Okay, so we distributed vertical centers and we got these in relation to each other. And we can maybe pop that up one more like that. Let's turn off the sketch over here. So now we can see that. And um, now what other sizes do we want to maybe try to do? Let's put in a big one. So I'm going to go back to the rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a big one. And maybe slide that down just a little bit and then let's throw in two like medium sized ones I guess I, I don't th know that there's any rhyme or reason to how the interface in uh, Star Trek is actually formed how do we can we just resize that up just a little bit and slip it down a little bit more and then I'm just going to uh, copy this guy by alt dragging it and then now I think we'll make this part be uh, the top so how are we gonna do that well first off we want to make the curve up here and so let's grab a an ellipse tool okay something weird just happened What what is what is this? Is Photoshop crashing on me here? <laughs> yeah, that's glitcherific. Um, hmm. Okay, I've lost access to that tool. All right. Well, hang on, and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, I can't claim to know what happened with that, uh, but restarting Photoshop seems to have handled it. Let's see. So now I need to remember how exactly I did this before. Um, do we add the shapes and then like subtract out of them? Or do I just draw a box and then maybe uh, use a selection to um, to delete them out? Let's try that instead. So let's see. If we take a couple of boxes and we just maybe put it out to like there and then we draw another box from here to say there Did I get that spacing kinda close maybe just a little bit more it doesn't have to be precise but I do want it to get close I'll tell you what I'll um, move it with the arrow keys until it looks about right and then I'll drag this handle which will pop it to that alignment point okay so now we've got that now what we need to do is get this curve going here and the curve is going to be probably the hardest bit of all so uh, do we want to color these things first yeah let's let's go ahead and do that let's uh, let's zoom out a little bit and let's just color these things so do we use, say, the paint tool here and Alt? Hmm, okay, doesn't seem to be, I seem to be very derpy this morning with this stuff. 
I'll tell you what I'm going to do. That's that one. That's that one. What's this one? Okay, that's you. So bring that down to here. I'm going to take all of these and I'm just going to rasterize it. We're good enough with those that we can uh, that we can work with it. I noticed that these lines are a bit bigger, aren't they? Uh, I'm I'm going to live with that though. So we've rasterized all these lines here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this in an easy way. I'm just going to do color overlay, and then that way we can change it easily if we want to. Copy this layer style and paste it down like that. Close all these back up. I get why it opens those, but I almost wish it didn't. And then we could do, um, these are kind of like the base colors, right? But, and sometimes they go, all right, uh, jump from that color to that color, right? Um, and sometimes they go in like shades. So the question is, do we want to go in shades? Do we want to do, I mean, there's a whole lot of decisions to make as you work through this. But maybe I think we'll do something like this. We'll do like a little color patch of similar items nearby each other. Let's try that. Uh, maybe that. Oh, no, not that. Why do we have... I'm having trouble here. You are shape to copy to. Okay. And I want you to be a different color. But you seem to be matching the color above no matter what I do. Are they just that close? And they really are just that close in color. I couldn't see the difference there. Okay, shape to copy. We will make you start to be maybe this um, thing in like these two colors here with the big one down at the bottom that color so let's go with this on this one we will go with um, this color and then this big bottom one will make it this color there we go I think that probably looks okay for the bottom part there. Let's go with the top. Uh, interface shape 4 is a purpley color. Now, we're going to go with this purpley color. Go with maybe a couple intermediates here. So, like that. This next one, we'll do that. Oh, no, actually, hang on. Because I think I want to make that the uh, the swoopy color there. And that is the same color as that one. So what can we get out of here? I'll tell you what. Let's grab this color again. And then let's just make it just a little bit lighter. Hmm. No, let's make it this color. And instead grab this one and make this color sort of... I mean, there is no intermediate between purple and orange, right? So we have to find a color that we want. Let's go with... Make that oranger. No, definitely not lime green. Definitely not lime green. I want to stay with their, with their overall color style, but we can have some variants. I find myself not very happy with this, but um, but I'm gonna live with it. This color. Oh, that's here. Okay. Yeah, we may not like that. We may have to do some work with that. Okay, let's get back to these guys. I'm going to merge these two layers together. That's going to give us a raster shape. I am going to go ahead and throw a color overlay on it, just so we can get it into the same color frame as these other things. We may have to work with these. <laughs> I'm not very happy with them. All right. So let's 
think about how we make this work. Uh, let's see. If we take an elliptical marquee tool, put it right here, and expand it out so that the middle of the ellipse is at each of these points. Is that too much? I think that's too much of a curve. We want to have the curve look reasonable for the shape. And it doesn't have to be constrained. It doesn't have to be constrained to this, so we can make the middle down like that. So this is pretty good right here. What we'd like to do is select the outside of this and um, and then clear everything everything that's beyond this edge here. But right now, this is beyond this edge, so is all of this. So we take the, the magic wand, hold down the shift key so that we're adding to the selection. And it does that. Okay. Yeah, that's not quite what I wanted to have happen. Well, that's fine. Uh, I don't know why I was thinking that the selection box would bound it, but it didn't. So I'm going to hold down the shift key, use the rectangular marquee tool to grab all that stuff up there and we'll just grab that to make sure. Now if we control shift I we can delete away that little bit there. Let's unview the um, the guides and take a look. Zoom it back out. Yeah that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Okay so back in. 100? Yeah 100 will work. Let's view the guides again. Guess I should learn a shortcut key for that. And let's try again with this uh, elliptical marquee tool. So if we just go up to the corner here and drag it down, we can probably find a reasonable curve. Maybe something like that. And what we'd like to have is this little bit here. So, um, We can control shift I to select inverse. So now we've selected everything outside of this here. And then let's take some stuff out of it. So I'm going to take the marquee tool and I'm going to use the alt tool to, uh, alt key to invert the selection. I'm sorry. No, I don't want that. I want a rectangular marquee tool. Remove from the selection is what I was trying to say going to do that and that. Now I think that if I just grab the fill tool and fill right there, no that doesn't work. It's funny I thought it would be bounded by that but again it was not. Okay so of course it's not because it overrides. Alright so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep doing this for a little bit. So this is the selected area right here and also out here. I've probably done this in a really, really unreasonable way, and that is okay. If you can think of an easier way to do the selection, then by all means, go ahead and do it. But sometimes derpy ways are the best. Not really. They never are, but that's okay. So zoom back in to our spot over here. Am I right? Yeah, okay. Cool. Oh my goodness. All right. So, you know, sometimes you, you everything comes together. Sometimes you just have to work with it for a little while. But, uh, but I think that's a pretty good shape right there. Now we can also take this and let's turn on our guides again. What is the thing for that? Control and semicolon. Control and semicolon. There we go. Cool. All right, so we've got a copy of the shape six now. I'm going to drag it up here, and I'm going to flip it vertical. I really want that to say flip vertically, but it doesn't, so we will flip it vertical. And that's good enough. That's all aligned right there. Now, um, would it make sense, and I think it would, to maybe do this in a different shape? So, rather than have these at exactly the same spot, why don't we make this one go like all the way across? And uh, that's easy enough to do. 
all we need to do is select this area here make sure we got the right layer selected and then fill and there we go now we go all the way across and let's select a different color set for this nope this is just like at the exactly the wrong zoom level for me I can't get can't get comfortable can't it's too far out to see properly comfortably and too close to uh, too close to see everything so there we go and I think actually we can just throw another button up top there yeah we can do uh, one thing though I want to do shape 6 is that so here's everything else right here let's do a little bit of positioning because I've got kind of a visual gap there that I really don't like right around this button so let's just cinch that up a little bit how does that look turn off the turn off those things turn off the guides yeah still a little bit right there so close that up a little bit is there also a little a little widely separated let me think which one are you you're that one okay maybe just one each on these things when you're working on your map uh, zoom in and out a lot and I think that uh, you know real real artists do this too where they'll they'll you know turn it upside down and look at it look for stuff that really calls itself out when you're up close maybe it doesn't look wrong but when you pull out do these lines look consistent? Do the spaces between them look consistent? And if they don't, then do something about it. Basically, I think is the uh, the way to say it. Uh, let's see. I'm going to, oddly enough, I'm going to grab this. Let's go back to our guides. I know the key for that. There we go. Let's go back to our guides there. And zoom back in a little bit. And I'm going to grab this new Shape 6 copy that we made, this guy here, and I'm going to drag it down to here. Now that may sound weird, uh, but what I'm going to do is delete out some stuff. I'm going to pull that down under Shape 4 so I can see where Shape 4 is. And then I'm going to delete it out to about there. And now we've got a new little bit here. Um, to be our our further edge of the thing and let's see so if we wanted to we could put a little a couple of little things over here I'm gonna grab that I'm going to delete it and I'm just gonna paste it back in now it's not gonna be the right color but that's okay and then I'm gonna slide it over to the edge of the uh, of the guide over there highlight it delete and then I'm going to do it one more time actually maybe two more times delete paste it back in slide it over so the gap looks okay delete that delete and I'm going to do it one more time I'm going to do like halfway if I can something like that actually maybe a little bit less something like that paste it back in drag it over here give me some spacing although there I think yeah good and we'll delete that okay I'm pretty good with that now zoom out let's get our palette back and let's do like a let's do a color thing over here how are we going to do this so this guy is our shape 2 copy that's our orange one this guy is our purple one so let's copy the layer style I'm going to paste it across all of these and that made it yellow for some reason. Um, 
I, it couldn't explain that. I don't know why. I thought I clicked on the purple one, but maybe I didn't. No, I clicked on the yellow one. That's all right. Uh, let's let's grab the player style. Press paste in the proper one. Why can't I get right today? Hey, I don't know, man. That's the yellow one. So where is my... There you are. All the way up there. Okay. Yeah. Let's get this straight here. i tell you what I'm going to do, actually, is let's put in... You're the top one, right? So let's, let's make a group because it's getting visually confusing. So that's the top section of the interface. You will go in there, and then all of these things will go into the bottom section of the interface. Right? There we go. Bottom, top. Good deal. I'm happy with that. Now, let's get these straightened out. That's this. You are these guys. Okay. Let's put those up top. That can come down below here. That one can stay where it is. This one should come here. Okay, so these are our from right to left over here. So let me make sure, yeah, not being derpy. Copy layer style, paste layer style, and oh my god, okay, yeah, we got there. Okay, let's see, what can we do to these? So what I would like to do is just maybe modify the colors manually just so that we get like a, a different feel here. And what I think I'll do is go towards saturation on them. Just a little more saturated. You'll notice that the all cars panels, they don't tend to be all that saturated, but you can certainly do it. I said a little more cartoony looking, but we're getting smaller and smaller over here, so I'm kind of okay with that. How's that look? It's okay. This looks kind of boring, to be honest about it. Now, the other thing is that the end cap is often rounded. Um, what do we want to make it rounded? We could do. We could also put a little lip down here if we wanted to, but I don't think I want to. And then they obviously, I mean, obviously they don't have to be rounded. And you know what? I don't think I'm going to. I don't think I'm going to do it. Let's just make them straight. If we wanted to make them rounded though, and we'll just do it as an exercise, because I think it's probably important to take a look at that. Let's go to the top piece. This is this one right here. And let's grab the elliptical marquee tool. Start over here in the corner and drag it out. Now that is just a perfect circle. If we control shift I, we select the inverse of it. So we've selected everything outside. And now I'm gonna take the marquee tool again, make sure it's the rectangular marquee tool going to zoom out a little bit and what I'm going to do is hold down the alt key drag down to here I'm going to drag over to here and then I'm also going to make sure I get that little bit there because we don't want that so this is now our selected area well actually I should say the inverse of this is our selected area if I hit delete we'll just carve that out nicely so again there's probably a better way to do this and I'm just sort of forgetting it I think I was doing it in a more clever way the first time I made this thing but uh, but for some for some reason I'm not it's not grokking not grokking it um, so we could try to do this down here I'm not gonna bother with it um, you decide which way you like it sometimes they end flat and I kinda like that look as opposed to that where it's just sort of rounded off now uh, let's see so let's do a little bit uh, should we do buttons? Yeah, let's go ahead and do buttons real quick. So we'll turn on view and we're going to get the guides again. And let's create a little area over here for buttons. I'm just going to make a spot for one. I 
Actually, I kind of like that little bit of asymmetrical look they've got going with two lines of buttons. So let's do that. And we'll put just a few on one side. I don't want to try to do that, though. Let's get rid of that one. What we'll do is we'll put it right in there. So let's go here like that. And um, let's make a new group. And we'll call this panel, like button panel. So we're going to make a button right in here. We're going to make it with perfectly rounded edges. So I'm going to start over here. I'm going to hold down the shift key, draw out our selection over to there. I'm going to go over here. I'm still holding the shift key. Drag it over to there. And then I'm going to grab the rectangular marquee tool, hold the shift key and I'm going to drag it over to about there. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to create one new layer and fill it. Zoom out a little bit. Yeah, good enough. And what we can do now is just go back into that a little bit and I'm going to start copying, nope, hold down the Alt key and copy it and then I'm going to copy it a few more times just kind of getting it roughly where I want it and then I'll use the auto spacing tool and we don't have to make these align just like we did the others should we go all the way down? sure we'll go all the way down and let's put a little button over here as well now, uh, let's see. You are that button. The first one is that. So these two are the ones that are off center, off, off on the left over here. And this one here, we're just going to do that little arrangement tool. And I always get confused about this. So what I want to do is get these two to align in the middle. Actually they're already aligned. We don't have to do that. This one and this one. I want them to be lined up. So we're going to try this a couple ways. I'm not sure which one you're supposed to select first. Yeah, See that moved the one on the right which I don't want. Okay so I'm selecting the one on the right first and then that. Am I doing that the right way? No. Okay select them the other direction and it still does it sometimes I'm very unclear about how the align thing works well I'll tell you what <laughs> you can do what you want they're close enough um, all I did there was it moved that down like one pixel so I just moved the whole the whole selection up one pixel um, I thought that it was like the first one you picked was the anchor that would in the uh, anything else you selected would align to that anchor and then sometimes I think it's the other way around like you select everything and then you select the anchor and you hit a line and it never seems to work consistently for me it's probably something that could be looked up and they help and I've just never done it before and I probably won't start now I'll probably continue to ponder it uh, eternally so we're gonna make a little color overlay copy and paste and we'll paste all these layer styles down here like that and I'm going to actually leave that button right there red I'm gonna leave that one right there red this guy here no not that guy put you back down this guy no it's the layer 4 copy. No, it's original layer 4. That's the guy. Let's make him a different color. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see my color. Zoom out a little bit so I can see my color stuff. I'm also going to make this one kind of uh, like glowy, but maybe maybe orange. Like These are going to be like little warnings that have popped out over here and you know you may or may not be able to make a more realistic interface by sort of going oh okay well think about the story behind it what do, what do these buttons actually do I mean if they're nonsensical yeah they're you know if you don't think about that you may you may find that they they really just don't make sense 
visually. Have I taken the same color I have? Let's not take the same color. Let's take that color. You are that one. The one I want is I am unable to find it is this guy here. And I'm going to take this same color here, but what I'm going to do is increase the So I'm going to pull it down here to the middle a little bit. We'll take the glow off of it a little bit and put it there. Okay, reduce the saturation a little bit. For those of you who don't know what glow, taking the glow off of it means. And uh, here we go. Let's make these a little more towards the purpley. Honestly, probably want to come up with like a better palette for this, like some gradients and stuff too, rather than just the base colors, if you're going to try to do this in a way that looks good. And then let's go more blue. There we go. Okay, we're going to turn that off. I'm going to remember that I can hit a key to do that. And yeah. All right, so now that all that remains really is decorating this with some text. So let's take a look at doing that real quick. And I'm just going to create a new layer. I'm going to call it text. And you could group these with your buttons if you wanted to, uh, but I'm just going to create it in a new layer. So let's grab a text tool and let's set our color to black if Photoshop responds to me. I'm going to put her there and I'm just going to type in a little random number sequence and then I'm going to, we want to be left aligned with that, actually no, we want to be right aligned with that, but we do want the font to be a lot smaller than I've got it currently, oops, okay, I want the font to be a lot smaller than I've got it currently, maybe even smaller than that, but let's get the right font here, so it's Swiss, Swiss, We've got bold and regular. I don't know what's going to look better on the buttons. So let's see. That does not strike me as a Star Trek font, to be honest with you. What uh, what fonts do I have here? I, I I know what I know. They say I know what they say. But um, but I kind of liked my Star Trek fonts. Do I have the original? Now that's old school Star Trek. We'll go back with that if it's not going to work. If I don't have a Star Trek font installed, I thought I did have, but I may not. No, I don't appear to have. So we'll go with the Swiss for now. I don't. I don't know about those numbers. Um, they're very serify. This one. Yeah. All right. Fine. That's the bold. Let's go with like uh, twelve. Yeah, I think that looks looks in scale. Also, this kerning here. What's with that? Did I have I got an extra space in there? No, it's just weird kerning on the one. Yeah, I, I wouldn't go with this font, to be honest about it, but it, it's going to serve us for now. We're going to leave it, um, but what we can do is drag these down, and you're going to have to eyeball this or use guides, whichever you want. What you can do is put a... Um, we can take them all, and we can make them right aligned or something at some point, but the bottoms you're going to have to handle individually by the way when you're alt copying, alt dragging, copying stuff it can be beneficial to you to um, do them in order <laughs> so start with one uh, at the top or bottom and then drag that way you'll know what order they're in. These are all higgly piggly um, but that's okay. Okay I'm going to do that just get them aligned and then I'm going to pop them over there and then we can just go in here and we can edit these guys. Which one did I get? Who knows? 
that one. Okay. Let's do that with it. Let's grab you or that one. Let's grab this. And who knows what these things are? I don't know. You don't know. Doesn't matter. I notice some people like to um, actually put, you know, real real words here, and you could certainly do that if you want to warp core or whatever. Go ahead. I'm just going to fin finish enough of these that we can get an idea of what the look is going to be here. Okay, we'll leave that one big, a big number. Let's change this one. Forty-two. You got to have a forty-two in your interface, and you also need a one-one-three-eight if you're going to be doing a sci-fi interface, no doubt. Okay. So there we go. There's those, and let's grab these guys. Let's grab the forty-two. I think. And I'm going to drag them over here, and I'm going to change something about this. So now I'm going to put this down here. I'm going to make it just a quick new layer. I'm going to call that buttons, just so that I know for sure that that's what I'm dealing with. And also, I'm going to center these. I don't know whether the text on buttons is centered in Star Trek or not, but I like it. Um, so I'm going to go with that. And I'm just going to pull down a couple of these guys over to these buttons. right and so that is the original that does bottom two all right so we're going to center these vertically and going to space them vertically and then those two look all right to me so let's make this 42 copy here yeah let's make that let's make that actually a word let's um, I don't know and uh, you know something right like we can actually throw a couple words in there if we really feel like it which one are you you're the top one there might as well make us feel like we're, we're looking at something I would honestly probably stick with the numbers on this but that's okay Feel like we're looking at an interface of some sort and then I will go ahead and make these just uh, just be numbers because our built-in universal translator isn't really doing the job are you the right one you are uh, and you here will be that now uh, let's make all of these a bit smaller too let's say these are going to be 10 point I think that looks a little bit better yeah good deal okay and then up here uh, I would just do like something simple like title or whatever and let's go with um, let's see this is going to be our call it sidebar and you can't close because you're not actually have anything in there there we go and now one more one more bit of text and then I think we're gonna call it a day on this um, but I will post or I will uh, you know come back with a here's my finished version of the thing so you guys can all see it and so here we're going to pick actually an interface color let's take this bright orange here and uh, deck Plan Intrepid Class USS USS Voyager because no doubt it bears the stench of Janeway somewhere on it. Somewhere in that deck plan. You know she's changed something in there. And then let's mess around with the uh, now I tell you the font it actually is a pretty good match for uh, 
that actually is a pretty good match for their numbers. These here, I don't know, maybe there are serifs on the one. Doesn't seem right to me. Yeah, so something like that. And you can decorate this any way you want. Like in my deck plan, I put, you know, like a little grid of numbers. Looks like something's happening on there, but, you know, this is a pretty basic version of what I did, but we did it pretty quickly, so there you go. I mean, the one I did originally took took quite a few hours. Uh, this one was just sort of thrown together. Spend as much time with on it as you want. Get as, uh, you know, as special with the colors as you want to get and uh, come up with something you like but actually you know what I'm thinking we're gonna call this done we could put a lot more detail in here we could put in the leader lines uh, which could be as simple as alright one more thing let's see uh, let's go with smaller font again maybe down to 10 point Janeway's couch All right now, uh, I'm going to create a new uh, a new layer over here. I'm going to use the uh, polygonal lasso tool, and I'm going to draw a line like this. I'm going to edit stroke, make it two pixels in width. Mm, no. No, let's go back. Just use the history um, thing here to remove that. Edit stroke, say three or four pixels, probably. You want this to be kind of big and cartoony, like the interface to some degree, I think. Just get rid of everything else. And then we could also do a layer style on here. We could throw in a drop shadow or maybe a stroke just so that it stands out. That's not very Elkarzy, but it's possible if you want to make that distinction. So something like that could work. You can also put some text in here to describe the level or do whatever you want it to do. But in general, uh, your best bet is going to be to go and uh, take a look at stuff in the existing universe, whether it's Star Trek, whether it's Firefly. Just always, whenever you're making a map, that especially if it's supposed to fit into a particular universe, go and get a bunch of reference material, take a look at that stuff, and see what, what their stuff looks like. Uh, we may find that this is too far apart, for instance, and it probably is. It actually is sticking out in my brain right now as, you know, this really should be like maybe a quarter the size, this space between here. Um, so just kind of pay attention to all that stuff. See what you think, and... Um, See if you can figure out, you know, how to modify your design. Let's see, what is this? What is that? A advanced Starship Design Bureau ADSB A S D B. Something like that. I think that's what's what the uh, Star Trek -y thing is called. If we go in here to the top, for instance, we can actually push that down and see. How does it look? And actually, I think it looks pretty good if we close that up a little bit. And yeah. All right, final step. Let's make it framed. You could get a lot more precise with this as well, but I'm just going to eyeball it. There we go. There is our Star Trek deck plan. So I don't know what map I'm gonna, what what kind of uh, tutorial I'm gonna do next time, but uh, let me know if you guys have any thoughts, anything you'd like to see, and uh, I will try to uh, do something that you want to see. Otherwise, I will come up with something, and we'll be back with that later on when I get a chance. All right, talk to you soon. Bye.